Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So uh, today is Electronics Project Day. Uh, that's the that's the main show on the main channel. Um, my uh, silly job title for today is the Buzz Boss. Today I'm the Buzz Boss, and the uh, old book teardown that we'll be doing for uh, for this show is Basic Electronics by Van Valkenburg, uh, Nuga, and Neville Inc. Looks like a, a company put this together. This is volumes one through six. So uh, looking forward to tearing that down with you very soon. Uh, today we're doing uh, a kit. It's the uh, uh, signal generator that I picked up from AliExpress recently. So it's a it's a little bit of a of a, of an uh, a, a, an uh, adventure. We have to do a lot of things and test a lot of things out. So uh, no spoilers. This is the video. Um, watch uh, this video to see me assemble the, the signal generator that we'll be using to test our oscilloscope, which is the next project that we'll be doing. So, uh, without further ado, here we are on the bench, and these are our projects uh, that are in our little project boxes. Uh, this one is a digital oscilloscope, and this one is a waveform generator, uh, also called a function generator or a signal generator. Now, uh, obviously, we could uh, build the signal generator and then use it to test the oscilloscope, or we could build the oscilloscope and use it to test the signal generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the simpler project first, which is the signal generator, and we're going to test it with my oscilloscope my actual good oscilloscope, my Regal MSO 5074 scope. This DSO 138 or whatever it is, uh, is uh, not as capable as my bench scope. Um, let me see if I can get a reading on its uh, bandwidth here. <coughs> Analog bandwidth 200 kilohertz. So it's a uh, yeah, it can't, it can't even do one meg. Um, my oscilloscope is pretty anorexic, but it can do 70 megahertz, 70 megahertz, uh, with the capacity to upgrade it if I hack it or spend a lot of money with Regal. Um, but I, I have no need for that either of those things yet. So this is the oscilloscope. We're going to do it second today. We're going to be doing this one together, which is the... Uh, the signal generator and then once it's uh, operating we should be able to uh, uh, give it a test on uh, our scope so it doesn't look too complicated does it I uh, have to say I haven't done a kit like this for a long time so I'm just getting back into uh, electronics when I was a kid I did a bit of electronics but I tell you electronics has changed since I was a kid I remember I mean I suppose Resistors haven't changed. Well, I suppose they have. These days, usually you get uh, surface mount stuff. And back in my day, they were all 5% resistance. Uh, this idea of 1% 1 uh, 1 tolerance, that was unheard of back in the day. Uh, at least as far as I was concerned. Now, uh, this is uh, marked up, but it's marked up in Chinese, so I don't know. Uh, really what we're dealing with. Uh, let's see if I can figure out the uh, uh, the schematic. Hopefully uh, hopefully there's enough sy any symbols and such. Now that's a nice touch I think. I am pleased when they uh, give you uh, um, sockets for your integrated circuits. That That is a nice touch. They could have left those out. Uh, and saved themselves half a penny, and they didn't. So uh, that's really quite nice. I'm very happy about that, actually. I uh, even when when they're not provided, I usually use these guys just because my soldering skills aren't really that good, and I worry about overheating the uh, the device. Oh, look at that! So it's going to be DC powered. That's cool. <sighs> When I was a kid, um, I had to think about whether I could afford these or not, these sockets. Now, we've got some uh, some jumpers here. Very good. Green ones. And we've got some pin headers. 
Look at that, that's well damaged. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Um, it's only got three pins on it. I don't know if that's by mistake or by design. I don't know. Anyway, I've got more pin headers if we need. So, uh, got a couple of odd resistors there. Transistor. Got an LED of some description. Alright. It's a potentiometer for tuning something. And here's the leg that fell off our, our pin header. So that's supposed to be four, I think. And it's actually only three and a bit. Um, but that's okay. We can deal with that. Alright, there's two potentiometers there. And... Yeah, that's everything. Now let's have a look at the uh, at this instructions and see what we can make of that. So is this Chinese or Japanese? I'm not sure. I'm not seeing any. I don't know. I don't know uh, my Asian languages well enough to tell. Uh, I think that Ichi Ni San Shi, that might be uh, the same maybe in Japan and China. Let me find out. I'll be back in just a sec. I'm back. And the answer is yes, Chinese and Japanese use the same symbols for the numbers, but they uh, pronounce them differently. Anyway, here we are, part one. Um... Okay, uh, so uh, there's the terminals for uh, sine and tangent, and then there's square and there's ground. So those are our outputs, uh, and our inputs, uh, we want power in. Where does the power go? Uh, I'm not seeing it. Are you seeing power? Where's power? This might be here, JK1. Yeah, that looks right, doesn't it? That goes there. Okay, that's power up there. <sighs> well, I suppose the third column is the uh, the number of uh, the quantity of components, uh, and the uh, second one is the uh, the, the name which fortunately I can read uh, and then there's the various specs in here so the B502 I'm surprised at that I don't know what that is because if it's a transistor there's not three of them I oh, know it just why does it say B502 I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean it's R1 R4 R6 R1 R4 R6 so three resistors, but what's B502? Oh, maybe these. Oh no, there's only two of those. Okay, it's a bit of a mystery. Uh, 104, B503. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Let's see if we can figure out from where they're placed. So R1, ah, oh, okay, it's not the potentiometers. Those are those, R2 and R3. Where is R2 and R3? Okay, the 104, that's R2, R3. Okay, at least you know what those are. Now we've got three something or others, R1, R4, and R6. Uh, where are they? Not jumping out at me. Oh, I see. R1, R4, R6. These are the
the potentiometers. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, so they're not all the same spec. So R1, R4, and R6, and then R5 is a B503. Ah, all right, so that's a B502, and that's a B502, and this is a B502. So this should be a B503, and it is. Okay, well, we're making progress. Uh, let's just put the components in literally in the order that they're listed. Then we don't have to uh, we don't have to double get double double guess or, or, or lose our place. Uh, but before we do that, let's just sort them all out. So we've got two one k resistors. Now, uh, what am I going to do? I'll just. Um, open up my uh, uh, resistor color code system here all right now we're going to do a five band resistor and let's just see so we want uh, 1k so that'll be that'll be these ones won't it let's just have a look at these under the Okay, we've got uh, brown, black, black, brown, by the looks of it. Uh, brown, black, black, brown, 1K, brown, brown. These are our 1Ks. Uh, all right. And then after the, <coughs> after the 1K, R2 and R3. Oh, I see. This is R2 and R3. Okay, good. And then 502, uh, 104, 503, 1K times 2, 10K times 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I bet you these are them. So let's just have a quick look at those. Uh, it's like brown, black, black, oh no, brown, red, black, black, uh, brown, red, black, black, 120 ohms. Perhaps I got it the wrong way around. How about brown, black, black, red, brown, black, black, red, 10K. Yep. Good. There's our 10K. <laughs> and then we've got, uh, two 4.7K. So it looks like one of them came loose. But this was a part of two, so let's just see what he is. This looks like uh, yellow, brown, black, brown. Uh, so let's do yellow, brown, black, brown. 4.1K. So that's probably not uh, brown, that's probably violet isn't it is it brown violet let's just have a closer look yeah it is in fact brown violet sorry uh, yellow violet black brown yellow violet black brown 4.7k now where's the other one that's the same color maybe this one hey <sighs> what's this look like Uh, I can't really see that color real well. Yeah, okay, that's our other 4.7K. And now we've got two odd ones. We've got uh, 30K and 20K. So 30K will start with orange. This one starts with orange. And then uh, 2K will start with uh, red. And it does indeed start with red. Now, uh, I suppose I should measure them as well, hey? Why not? Well, let's do that. Shall we use the bench scope? We'll just use this scope here. 
that'll do nicely. And we can use the uh, we can use the hook clips. That's fine. So black and red, and on resistance mode. All right. So let's. Uh, can you see the reading there? If I put it there, can you see that? No, you can't. How about that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay, good. So let's do them from uh, front to back. This should be 2K. Oh. What do we got? 1.97K, that's pretty close to 2K. And then uh, this should be 30K, I think. Was it 30K? It was. There we go. That says, oh yeah, hang on. There we go, 30K, yep, that's right. I'm pretty confident that the rest of those are gonna be uh, just what they say on the tin. Uh, so, now we're dealing with 104, we've got six of those. So, uh, let's get some extra light over here. That's 104. That's 101, I believe. Uh, 104. That's 222. 104. We're looking for six 104s. It says 105, 104. Okay, we've got six 104s. We've got one 101. Uh, we've got one 222. Two, two. And then we've got one 105. Ripper. Now, uh, We've got our, our, our pin header for four, 4x2, four but what about the 2x2 uh, the two two pin header? C1, C, jumper, okay. All right, I think we're gonna need to, um, to get ourselves some pin headers for, for use as JP1, because uh, this one is broken. So uh, just give me a second and I'll go and grab uh, an alternative. All right, I'm back and I found this. This is uh, bigger than it needs to be. Um, but uh, we might have more luck cutting it than they had at the factory. Let's see. So we use our good old trustees and I'm not sure which is the best way to go. So let's just try this way and see how we go. There we go. That came off pretty nicely, I reckon. Yeah, that's good. All right. So uh, we put him in the scrap bin because we don't need him anymore. And uh, we can put this in the scrap bin too because he's surplus to requirements. All right, so we've got our various capacitors figured out. Now we're gonna have our 16 volt 100 UF microfarads. That's him. And then there should be two 10 microfarads. Just check that. 10 and 10. Very good. And then we get up to the integrated circuits. We've got uh, the big one. Uh, and then we've got a Ah, oh, okay, there's a 78L09. I don't know what that is. Uh, but we'll figure, it, we'll figure it out. 
Uh, uh, <coughs> are we missing something? It says that there's four. Oh, perhaps one of these is not actually a transistor. Perhaps this is some sort of an IC. Let's uh, put him under the microscope here and remind me to uh, turn the microscope off. Uh, so, let's just try and get that in focus. Now, can we read that? What does it say? How about a whole bunch of light? That's some light. Seven eight L O nine. Seven eight L O nine. Okay. So that's uh that's U two. And we should be able to find U two on here. There it is there. Okay, very good. Very good. Alright, so that explains that. Four integrated circuits, some jumpers, uh, and then some power. There's an LED, printed circuit board, uh, and it looks like M3. Uh, so those are some sort of screws. I don't know what they are. Maybe these. Maybe. I don't know. Alright, well, let's just take it from the top, uh, and we'll, we'll put the things in in the order that they, uh, they're listed. Why not? I think we've got all of the components. We know what we're dealing with. We're going to need our soldering iron. So let's, uh, let's get the iron on. <sighs> Set it 350. 350 ought to be good enough. I'll just get some water for the uh, for the sponge over here. Ah, oh, look at that. I forgot to turn you off the microscope. And I, just like I said, I would, I seem to always forget. All right. So, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's just put some water here in the, um, in the soldering thing. All right. Do you remember to fill up my water thing later on? Uh, I can do better actually. That sponge will take quite a lot of moisture. I heard that you should use your brass sponge and not your water sponge because the water uh, temperature uh, it shocks the uh, the metal in your iron apparently, dragging the temperature down real quick. So I've got my sponge up the back there. I'll try and use that mostly today. Now let's start with. The B502s. So there should be uh, three of them, and this should be a B503. B503, and indeed it is. Alright, so they're going to go in the front here R1, R4, R6. R1, R4, R6. Ripper. So. Shall we do them one at a time? I suppose so. I'm going to be needing some uh, tweezers, I think. Where are my good tweezers? Here they are. Just, uh, straighten him out a bit. Alright, let's try that. Now, which way does this board go? Like this. Pretty happy with that. I wonder if I'll time lapse this or not. Or will I just talk to you the whole time? I don't know. I'll time lapse it. I'm going to time lapse it starting from now.
I just wanted to uh, stop and remark on uh, what I've done here. Um, <clears throat> when I put these in, it seemed to me that they had a little bit of mechanical support if you pushed the edges around. So uh, that's why I, I went and redid the one that I'd already done. Uh, and I just flattened those things so um, that there's good mechanical support there now. Those things are, are literally sort of um, reinforced by the, the the nature of the of the the bendel, bended metal. So um, hopefully uh, that will reduce the uh, mechanical strain that that these will have when people use them to to change the uh, the settings. So I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I did that right, and I thought I might as well remark about that. Now I'll return you to our time-lapse footage.
All right, so we're back, and I've finished all of the soldering. We have to do some guesswork for the jumpers because it'll all be in Chinese, uh, and I don't speak Chinese. Not yet. If I keep doing enough of this electronics, I might end up figuring some of it out. So let's put our integrated circuits in. Oh, actually, let's just do a quick clean up the back here. So uh, I did do a bit of a clean earlier, but I used it again since then. So let's just hit in with the isopropyl again. Uh, cotton tip here, affectionately known as Q-tips, I believe, in America, uh, is getting dragged out by all of the rough ends on the connections. I might hit it with the brush first. I've got a brush here called the wet. This is the wet brush, so let's use the wet brush on the wet circuit board. Yeah, looks pretty good. Fair enough. A bit of the fluff off. Now, it goes this way, and pin one is indicated with the dot. So, let's get pin 1 in the right spot, and everything else will fall into place. I just need to uh, bend these together just a little bit. Alright. And to go closer. All right. No, nope, needs even more closer. And it didn't like that at all. Oh no! Oh, I've bent one of the pins almost beyond repair. Dear me. You can't take me anywhere. If that pin goes in, I'll be amazed. What a mess. Ah, oh, gee, I'll be lucky if I get out of this one alive. I think I might have broken it beyond repair. As long as it doesn't snap off, we might get away with it. Who knows what we've done? All right. Well, all right. Just need to push him across a bit. Jesus.
All right, I think we got away with it. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, U three is the TL O eight two. TL O eight two. All right, that's U three, TL O eight two. It's U three, pin one. There we go. All right, that one went in pretty well. And then just one more over here and pin one goes there. This is U4, it's a ICL7660. Yep. There we go. He popped in quite nicely, didn't he? Clip, clip, clip. All right, well, just going to give this a bit more of a polish. <sighs> I can feel it on the back, it's sticky. So that must be uh, flux if it's sticky. And, uh, Try and soak some of it up with a Q-tip. All right, now we've got the LED in, uh, and then where did the jumpers go? I'm not seeing the jumpers here. Oh, there they are. There's the jumpers. But it's not clear what they do. 12 for 15 volt. Square ground. Sign tan ground. I'll tell you what, I'm going to jump on the internet and see if I can get something in English about this guy. So, uh... Let's jump over to the computer together. Here we are on the computer. So, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to, uh, to see if we can find anything about the, uh, the equipment that we're working with. So I'll just, uh, sync up and then there's my link. Now this is the AliExpress, uh, kit that I purchased. Uh, it comes with three colors. Um, and the color is basically, uh, 
whether it comes with a case or whether it comes with a power supply and that sort of thing. I got A, which means no case, no power supply. Uh, D is case and power supply. C is no case, power supply. And B is case, no power supply. So I've got A, which is BYO power supply and BYO case. Uh, so we're not going to have a case and uh, we'll have to figure out what kind of power to put into this thing. Now it's called the ICL8038, I believe because of the, um, the, the integrated circuit that's in there. Uh, oh, look at that. So it was an integrated circuit. So apparently it's, uh, it's obsolete now. So let's jump over there and there and there. Why not? So, um, this is the Intercell ICL8038. Uh, waveform generator was an integrated circuit by Intercell designed to generate sine, square and triangular waveforms based on bipolar monolithic technology involving Schottky barrier diodes. ICL8038 was a voltage controlled oscillator capable of producing frequencies between a millihertz and 100 kilohertz. Some specimens capable of reaching 300 kilohertz. I believe it was 200. I thought I thought I saw 200 somewhere. But I'm not sure. Uh, the device has been discontinued by Intercell in 2002, uh, to which is weird because I saw the um, the markings seem to indicate it came out of the factory at, at 23, and maybe someone else is making it now. I don't know. Uh, triangular waves were produced by charging and discharging a capacitor with constant currents. The triangular waves were converted to sine waves involving a nonlinear network. The output frequency was set either by resistors or the external control voltage. The temperature drift could be optimized to less than 250 parts per million per degree Celsius by combining, combining it with a phase lock loop. It'll tell you about a phase lock loop as well if you want. Um, uh, Maxim designed a copy of the ICL8038 and marketed it as the Max 038 Both devices have since been discontinued. So I'm not sure where we got ours from. Maybe it was just old stock. Who knows? Uh, here is the PDF from Harris Semiconductor, September 1998. I'm going to download this. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, what are we going to, what are we going to call this? Let's save that anyway. And here's the data sheet. The ICL8038 waveform generator is a monolithic integrated circuit capable of producing high accuracy sine square high accuracy sine square triangular sawtooth and pulse waveforms with a minimum of external components. Okay. What we want to know is how to configure this guy. Yeah, specifications customer review specifications it's not much there is it oh there we go all right uh, adopting ICL 8038 and high speed op amp with higher accuracy can output sine triangle square forward and reverse sawtooth waveforms frequency range 5 Hertz to 400 kilohertz duty cycle 2 to 95 percent support dual power amplifiers without blocking capacitors ensuring high and low frequency signal distortion uh, adjustable frequency and amplitude frequency adjustment has coarse and fine tuning functions all are through hole components easy to install product introduction the ICL8038 multifunctional low frequency signal generator is a single chip integrated uh, circuit made using advanced processes such as Schottky barrier diodes it has the advantages of wide power voltage range high stability, high accuracy and ease of use. It can work with only a few external components and can generate square, triangular and sine waves simultaneously. 
The frequency of its function waveform is controlled by internal external voltage and can, can be applied to voltage controlled oscillation and frequency shift keying modulator. It has low frequency drift when temperature changes occur with a maximum of 50 parts per million per degree Celsius. Having various western signal outputs such as sine wave, triangular wave and square wave. The sine wave output has a distortion of less than 1%. The triangular wave output has a high linear linearity of 0.1%. Has a frequency output range of 5 Hz to 400 kHz. Wide working cycle, adjust, uh, working cycle adjustable between 2% and 95%. High level output range from TTL level 28 volts. That's probably 2.8 volts, isn't it? I don't know. Easy to use with minimal external conditions required. ICL8038 is a precision oscillation integrated circuit with multiple waveform outputs which can generate low loss true sine wave, triangular wave, rectangular wave and other pulse signals from 0 0.001 hertz to 300 kilohertz by adjusting individual external components. The frequency and duty cycle of the output waveform can also be controlled by current or resistance. Additionally, due to its FM signal input, the chip can be used for frequency modulation of low frequency signals. Parameter, material FR4 and acrylic, power supply voltage 12 volt to 15 volt, uh, frequency range 5 hertz to 400 kilohertz, uh, duty cycle 2 to 95, low distortion sine wave 1%, low temperature drift 50 parts per million per degree celsius uh, output triangular wave linearity 0.1 percent dc bias range minus 7.5 to plus 7.5 volts uh, output amplitude range uh, board size one square output two sine or triangular three ground oh there's more we can click view more there we go Potentiometer function, one, duty cycle, adjusting the duty cycle, uh, frequency regulation, adjust the frequency, signal adjustment, uh, signal DC bias adjustment, okay, amplitude adjustment, so sine wave, triangular wave, sawtooth amplitude modulation. Packing include, package includes one time signal generator DIY kit, pre-purchase instructions. The, this kit, Loose Parts, is not a finished product and is only used for scientific research and experiments. Some kits are equipped with faulty or poorly performing components with the aim of assisting the assembler ability to troubleshoot and improve performance. <laughs> By measuring and improving the performance indicators of troubleshooting and accessories, it is helpful to enhance relevant knowledge <laughs> and skills. Even if the kit, Loose Parts, is assembled, its technical specifications and parameters may not meet the standards of the finished product. If you want to improve the performance indicators of the assembled product, buyers can study and improve it themselves. This kit is not suitable for customers who require finished products. Assembling and debugging the kit requires corresponding knowledge and skills. Before assembling the kit, accessories should be measured to ensure their performance parameters are safe before installation. Customers who do not have the corresponding professional knowledge should not assemble themselves. Otherwise, they will be held responsible for the danger caused by producing this kit. It means you agree to the instructions. That's great. That's not dodgy at all. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Well... So we got some hints there, didn't we? Let's um, let's let's let's. What are we going to do? So this is the uh, ICL eighty thirty eight. So let's go to j five dot net wiki and let's add a page. Actually, before we do that, let's just do it here. What's going on here? There we go. Ah.
Here we are, back on the bench. I'll just uh, turn my air conditioner off so it doesn't make noise. Now, I uh, I was remembered that I have this. This is also uh, a kit um, signal generator. Uh, one that I put together some other time, or maybe I didn't even put it together. Maybe I bought this as uh, as constructed. Uh, very similar looking uh, in terms of its constitution. Um, not the same, but similar. Uh, and I think that it uses a different CPU. But the thing to know is um, the the big jumpers are for the frequency, and the small jumper is for to select between triangle or sign um, and then there's uh, the three terminals again ground and square and sign slash uh, tan so let's fire up the oscilloscope and we'll uh, have to uh, configure that we'll do that in a second okay so the um, those pins seem to go into the capacitors so that, that I would believe I, I'm an absolute novice but it looks to me like you get more or less capacitance depending on which um, uh, thing you've got there and that's probably going to affect the frequency so I reckon that we've got four settings for frequency and then this pin here jumper one uh, seems to what does it do uh, not sure exactly um, anyway, we'll, we'll try that. So I reckon we're going to need to have, I don't know where they gave us four. I think we only need to use one jumper, um, per set of jumpers. So I think we've got spare jumpers, which is fair enough. And I haven't been able to guess what the trim pots do. Um, this one doesn't seem to have trim pots. Uh, and the functions are different. It might have something to do with coarse or fine grain. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to turn everything right down, which is uh, counterclockwise usually. Now uh, we're going to want to stick him straight into a um, into a oscilloscope. So let's get a BNC cable with probes on the end of it, that's what this is. So we put him in on channel one. Now I'm gonna to have to configure this guy so that you can see it. So that's utility, IO, HDMI, on. And then we should be able to show you that. If I just hit that there. All right. Uh, Ah, all right. What about... There we go. All right. Actually, you know, I might as well. I'm not sure what I've done here. See if I can get the uh, the thermal cam operational as well. <sighs> Up it comes. It's just powering on. I think. Yep, there it goes. Just booting now. Hundred percent. And am I going to have to restart? I'm not sure. Yeah, let's restart. Uh, we're going to stop. 
All right, I was I was talking at you and I forgot to hit record there for a bit, so I'm not sure where where you left off. But what we've got at the moment is we've got 12 volts running in here with the power switch on the back, and I can turn the power on and turn the power off. I've got uh, uh, jumpers connected to the output pins, uh, and I've got ground and uh, square wave connected to the scope on channel uh, one, which is the yellow line that you can see in the oscilloscope. There, um, the heat. Uh, the, the thermal cam is on, so I'm not taking a hard look at that at the moment. Um, and as I touch things, that will, will, will change the heat and everything. So we're not really looking at that at the moment, but it might as well leave it on. Uh, if something gets really hot, uh, we'll know. Now, everything's turned right down over here, um, and that's probably not really what we want. Um, so, uh, yeah, not sure what, what we're dealing with here, but uh, I think that we know that this is duty cycle, this is frequency, this is DC bias, and this is amplitude. I believe that's what we're looking at there. And uh, and we don't know what the small potentiometers up the back here are for. And um, yeah, so uh, let's, uh, let's just see what we can do. Let's put him on and let's change some of these. There we go. All right. Now, if we put him on auto, okay, so uh, that looks like a square wave to me, and that's what we'd expect. Now, if this is duty cycle, it, it should make, uh, I should make the duty go, so I'm going to make the square wave go longer. Yep, that's the duty cycle, and it can go up to 95%. There we go, that's full at 95%, and it can come all the way down to 2%. Ah uh, well, and it can't even detect it at that range. Let's uh, let's auto calibrate on the low. No, it's just noise. Wow. All right. Well, let's put the uh, the duty cycle back up. It's something that it can see. All right. So there's your duty cycle. Um, let's make it about um fifty percent. That looks like about fifty percent to me. All right, now the next one is the frequency. So, yep, there we go. We can just adjust the frequency there. Let's turn the frequency right up. Okay, that's maxed out. And is it get, is it telling us the frequency? I think we should be able to add a counter. How do we do that? Uh, uh, measure, uh, counter, uh, frequency, uh, and add. Did that add a frequency counter? It did. Okay. A counter on and menu off. And uh, you should be able to drag him somewhere where he's out of the way. Okay, that's great. Uh, menu off again. So uh, we should be able to adjust the frequency. It's uh, 26 kilohertz. 25, 24, 23, 22. So how low can we go? Pretty low. It, it loses the si signal when it goes much lower. All right, so let's uh, keep the frequency up around 11 kilohertz. Let's try adjusting the DC bias. So let's see what happens there. Nothing. Interesting. So I'm not sure what that uh, that knob does. It doesn't seem to be affecting the signal at the moment. And this one's amplitude. Let's see if that, that hasn't changed anything either. Maybe the uh, DC bias and the amplitude don't apply to this wave. Now let's try uh, some other things. Uh, let's try uh, changing the frequency. So Let's just turn the scope off for a second and then we'll uh, take our jumper and we'll put him here. Let's see what that does. Okay, that's increased the frequency by the looks of it. Um, yeah, okay, that's the duty cycle, that's the frequency. So if we hit auto, okay, we're looking at um, I'll just turn that off. We're looking at nearly 400 kilohertz. Okay, so that's higher frequency. So let's uh, let's go to the lowest frequency. 
This is low frequency. We'll put him on. All right, let's see what we've got. Let's tune. And what do we got? We got some sort of kilohertz, but it's... All right, there we go. So we're down at 16 hertz. That's very slow. Very slow indeed. There's the duty cycle. Here's the frequency. All right, well, we can, how low can we go? Uh, to increase the duty cycle. What's this one do? Again, nothing. These don't seem to be relevant to the, uh, to the square wave. Perhaps they're things that only affect the triangular wave. Now let's adjust these t trim pots and see what changes. Doesn't seem to be changing anything, does it? What about this one? Doesn't seem to affect it either. Now let's just uh, turn him off for a second. And let's switch this jumper. Now what was our guess about the 2x2? Two two? Uh, triangle and sine. Triangle and sine. So I think we're done with the square wave. Let's switch ourselves over to the sine wave. All right. Let's go on. Now we're looking for a sine wave. Let's hit auto. We're on low frequency, so it should be very low. Uh, let's hit auto again. Okay, it looks like we've got a triangle wave of some sort, or maybe it's it's what you call a sawtooth. I'm not sure. So let's see what happens if we adjust these potentiometers on this signal. It is jumping around a bit, but I don't know. I don't know how to, oh, I've done something. There. And I'm not sure what these are doing. It does seem to change very subtly. I don't know. Um, so let's see if the um, the DC bias applies. Yeah, it does. Look at that. Okay, so the DC vi bias is uh, in effect there. Okay, and what about this one? This is the uh, amplitude. Yep, that's amplitude. So we've got amplitude and we've got DC bias, and we've got frequency, and we've got duty cycle. We change the duty cycle to get that. That's fascinating, isn't it? Absolutely fascinating. So it's triangular and sawtooth, depending on the duty cycle. All right, I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to put in the other jumper, and I'll turn him back on. And this should be sine wave, shouldn't it? But it's, it's really quite irregular. must be the yeah the DC bias let's hit auto again and tune it to there we go sine wave ish sine wave ish and what's this one do that's the uh, amplitude we turn the amplitude down and turn the uh, bias down and turn the frequency up and recalibrate it Let's go into something that's a bit higher frequency. Let's jump up two notches up to here and put him on and then auto tune him. And he's at uh, 48 kilohertz, but the trigger is rubbish. How do we adjust that trigger? Uh, where is the trigger here? Yeah. Let's auto tune him again. Okay, this is at 50 kilohertz. 
That's a rubbish signal. Well, it, it worked a lot better at the at the lower frequencies, didn't it? Let's put it back on a bit lower. Let's just go down one notch. Still higher than what we were playing with earlier. This is at three kilohertz. Let's see if we can tidy that up a bit. Can I move that trigger up? Yeah, I don't understand really. I'm still learning how to use all of this equipment. Can you tell? That's our duty cycle. That's our frequency. And this is our DC bias. And then this is the amplitude. Okay, and we don't know what these ones up the back do. Let's see what this does. Whoop. Yeah, okay, that has an effect on the waveform quite a bit, doesn't it? What about this one? Also affects the waveform quite a bit. Wow. Alright, let's go back to triangle wave. And that's that is triangle, isn't it? Let's take the the frequency. Let's recalibrate this thing. All right, that's the triangle wave. That's the duty cycle on the triangle wave. That's the DC bias. All right. Frequency is jumping all over the place. 270 to 350. It's not very stable, is it? Uh, let's try adjusting these guys. They seem to only really affect... Oh, no, it's affected something, hasn't it? Yeah. Alright, let's put it back down to low frequency. He seemed to like that better, didn't he? Alright. Let's auto-tune in. turn everything down that's the DC bias that's the signal amplitude let's go auto on that why is it in kilohertz it should it should be much slower than that let's try that Alright, that's a few hundred hertz, but it's not very stable, is it? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back to square wave for a bit. Alright, on we go. And then auto-tune. There we go. Alright, so that's a fairly stable square wave, isn't it? And we can change the duty cycle. And we can change the frequency. And the DC offset doesn't apply. And the amplitude doesn't apply. Okay, that's pretty interesting. And this, uh, I don't think, will apply either. Nope. Okay. And then uh, these, I don't think, affect the signal either. No. All right. So, let's, uh, 
let's set everything at mid-range just eyeballing those there that's mid-range and let's get some readings on the frequencies so uh, uh, just gonna um, clean, clean up this a little bit I wonder if we can Didn't seem to go all the way on that. Ah, there he is. Okay. All right. Well, we'll put them all in the middle. get a measure on that frequency we're looking at uh, 50 Hertz so let's just uh, clean up that bit where it says 2 by 2 header and we'll make a note on this side that's the uh, 2 by 2 uh, pin header and we're going to have, uh, let's say, one, two, three, four. And this will just have one and two. All right, so um, for the square wave, that's uh, 50 hertz, let's say, 50 hertz. And then for number two, if we just turn him off change the frequency turn him on and the frequency is 500 Hertz let's say and then we'll turn him off and we'll put him up to the next graduation and we'll turn him on and that looks like 16 kilohertz so let's say uh, 1.5 megahertz no, no. Let's just say 15k, 15 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, and then we'll turn him off, and we'll put him up here, and we'll turn him on, and that's 250 kilohertz, 250 kilohertz. So let's say tens, hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Okay, yeah, sure. So let's say uh, 10, say 100, 1,000, 100, 1,000, and uh, 10,000. And then the pin header. Uh, let's uh, let's turn him off, and we'll put him on to uh, sine wave mode, and turn him on, and let's just see what we can do with that signal. All right, it's a bit messy. Uh, let's turn the DC bias down a bit, and let's try uh, auto tuning on that. Okay. It's a bit uh, it's a bit of a messy wave isn't it now this is the duty cycle and this is the frequency a lot of mess on that on that signal that's the DC bias and this is the amplitude turn the amplitude up a bit 
all right now maybe those little peaks and troughs so first of all this what are we calling this is this a sine wave or a triangle wave let's turn it off and let's pop him over here all right let's auto tune this guy that's looking pretty triangle-ish to me what do you reckon what have I done with my little screwdriver how does this affect that Alright, duty cycle, frequency, DC bias, and amplitude. Uh, we were getting much better earlier. Maybe it doesn't like the high frequencies. Let's go back down to the low frequency. And let's tune that. Alright. Turn the frequency down a bit. DC bias down a bit. Let's turn the bias to turn everything to middle and reach. All right. And um, what do these do? Okay. That's looking very sine wave-ish to me. So maybe it's sine at the bottom. Let's try and change it to triangle and see what happens. Yep, that is absolutely triangle, isn't it? So, um, the jumper at the top is triangle. And the jumper at the bottom is sine. That's sine wave-ish. <clears throat> it did say sine slash tan. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I misunderstood that, I don't know. So, this is at uh, 1 kilohertz. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this thing here. Oh, I don't know what I've done there. Let's try and auto calibrate that. Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, we've got some sort of idea about what this thing does. It's uh. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's exactly stable. I don't know what that does. Wow. All right, so the sine wave can be made really quite irregular. Uh, that seems to be much more sine wave-ish, doesn't it? So what will we call that, that manipulation where we go from pointy to round? I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's pointy on the bottom or pointy on the top. And uh, in the middle seems to be a pretty sensible place to have that one if you want a nice clean wave. And then what about this one? What's he do? Pointy at the top, pointy at the bottom. All right. I don't know what's with this little drifty thing where it drifts in. I don't know. I'd like to know how to tune it so that it stopped moving. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. It's still jumping around a fair bit between uh, 10 and 70 kilohertz. Not kilohertz, hertz. Yeah, that frequency is going all over the shop. 
it's the duty cycle frequency DC bias amplitude and then squishy on the bottom or squishy on the top okay so that's our sine wave parameters uh, are we just going to call it squishy on the bottom and squishy on the top I really don't understand that setting Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I think we've got enough of a signal generator here to uh, test our digital oscilloscope. So I'm going to declare this project done. Let me take you over to the farewell camera and we'll wrap up. And that's a wrap. So, uh, uh, I was pretty happy with this in the end. It um, was a bit of a a challenge to figure it all out but basically it worked I didn't have to troubleshoot any uh, dodgy component values or short circuits or you know everything seemed to really work as advertised I, uh, I didn't test all the components before I put them in perhaps I should have um, I only read the note in in the uh, AliExpress listing that uh, that there might be dodgy parts after I'd already assembled the whole thing so uh, anyway um, yeah, pretty good bit of kit. So uh, when we assemble our, uh, our, our signal, uh, our DSO, the um, digital signal oscilloscope, is that what it is? It's this. Bear with me for one second. What's this called? It's an oscilloscope, but what kind of an oscilloscope? Uh, really should just have a big honking thing that says what it is. Some sort of an oscilloscope. Is it? Um, all right well I'm not seeing what I wanted to see anyway this kit um, is the one that we're going to do next and basically it's an oscilloscope um, it's a very uh, low resolution oscilloscope it doesn't go very high I think it goes up to hundreds of kilohertz or in that range um, but our signal generator also only goes up to hundreds of kilohertz so um, we'll be able to use this signal generator to test our, um, our other oscilloscope. And we've tested this signal generator with our oscilloscope that we know works. So uh, the signal generator should be handy when we do the next project, which is, uh, which is that. Oh dear, and I've just remembered. I'll be back in a sec, hang on a sec. It's been such a long time since I did a, a, a normal electronics project video on the main channel that I forgot that I have to um, tell you my silly job title and announce the old book that we're going to tear down. So the silly job title is Buzz Boss and the book that we'll be looking at is called Basic Electronics by Van Valkenburg, Nuga and Neville Inc. Sounds like a company made this. Expanded course, volumes one through six. The most understandable picture book course on electronics, including transistors, semiconductors, and frequency modulation ever written. You can learn basic electronics more easily and more rapidly than you ever dreamed possible. And it's got this thing here called Common Core with some sort of atomic thing around a big obelisk. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, on the back, another famous training program by Van Valkenberg or Burra, I'm not sure, Nuga and Neville Inc. Basic Electricity, 
five volumes. So I, I don't understand. It says expanded course volumes one through six, and then it talks about five volumes. So I'm, I don't really understand this. There's a note in the cover here that was written on the 25th of October, 1987. So I don't really understand that volumes thing. Are they saying, oh, this is volume one. Are they saying that, uh, that I think this is just volume one. Okay. Oh no, okay, so, uh, okay, that is volume one, and it ends at volume six. Okay, so the dust jacket doesn't talk about the sixth volume. Anyway, it looks like a kind of interesting book, uh, so that we'll be taking a close look at that in a video soon. Uh, I am uh, the Buzz Boss, and I'm signing off with my signal generator in a fully functioning uh, uh, condition. So thank you very much for watching and please remember to hit like and subscribe.